There are two kinds of people when it comes to mooncakes. Those who know its power, and those who are about to make one of the greatest food discoveries of their life. Okay, so today we're making mooncakes. Now, this is commonly something that I think people don't normally make completely from scratch. I don't, I don't know. I mean, they're, they could feel a little tedious because there's multiple steps, but it's really not that difficult. And just about anybody can do it. It's a couple tricks and a couple things you might need, which you can find at a local Asian market. But I think it's about darn time that we try to make our own the best we can. So with all that said, let's make this, shall we? So mooncakes will require some unique ingredients here, but all of these you can find very easily at an Asian market. Try not to skimp here, all right, partner? Anyway, in a small container or bowl, add 100 150 grams of golden syrup, then mix it in 50 grams of sunflower or peanut oil, and half a teaspoon or two grams of kansui, also known as lye water. This stuff right here specifically. You can also get it in an Asian market or Amazon, you know, lots of places. Whisk all that together, and then separately in a bowl, with one and a half cups or 220 grams of all-purpose flour, add in your oily golden syrup stuff, then just knead that together until completely incorporated, and you got a smooth little dough. Now cover that with plastic wrap, and let it rest for 30 minutes and up to four hours. Now, let's talk filling. We have two options, red bean paste or lotus seed paste, both very traditional. Either way, they both need to be soaked before doing this. Just be sure to split your lotus seeds and remove any green stems in the center. Now for the lotus, you'll need 320 grams of lotus seeds, and for the red bean paste, you'll need about 200 grams of red beans, also known as adzuki beans. Simply cover those with water, then with plastic wrap, and let them sit at room temp overnight. Fun fact, lotus seeds are also the same thing that we all saw in that weird trypophobia ad on websites in like 2010, so there you go. Anyway, once they've been soaked, drain them of their water, and whether you're doing red bean or lotus, place whichever you're using in a pot, cover with water, and bring to a boil. Boil that bad boy for 45 minutes to an hour, or until very soft and mushy-gushy. Be sure to stir occasionally unless you want to scorch your beans, which is a no-no, so don't do that. Next, you're going to blend your red bean or your lotus seed on high speed until beautifully smooth. This will take some power and try to resist adding any more liquid. Just utilize a tamper to get everything smooth, okay? A food processor works fine too, by the way. Now for the red bean, add your puree to a medium nonstick skillet set to medium heat and gradually add 150 grams of granulated sugar and 120 grams of peanut or sunflower oil, mixing in between to incorporate until all of it's added. Continue mixing and cooking until it becomes nice and thick like you see here. Finally, mix in two tablespoons or 24 grams of cornstarch then just keep mixing and heating for a couple more minutes until thick, and it can do this. Then cool that bad boy down all the way. For the lotus seed paste, add to your nonstick pan over medium heat again. This time, cook this guy dry, stirring frequently until it starts to thicken a little and begins to stop sticking to the pan. Then add 200 grams of powdered sugar and 250 grams of oil, peanut, or sunflower, alternating each until all of it is added and mixed in. Then just continue to cook and stir until thickened and lovely like so. Do some fun little tricks, because this stuff looks kind of funny. Then let it cool completely. Once your mooncake dough is ready, divide it into 40 gram pieces, then roll each of those pieces by hand into nice little balls. So cute. Oh, little baby. Separately, roll out 50 gram balls of whichever paste you made. Make sure to weigh this stuff out. By the way, it's really important to the shape and size. Size matters here. Now, in order to shape these, you're gonna need a mooncake press. They're pretty cheap, and I got mine on Amazon. There'll be a link in the description for the one that I have. Now, take one of your balls and roll it out in between two sheets of plastic wrap until it's about an eighth of an inch thick and four inches wide. Remove the top layer of plastic wrap, place a paste ball in the center. Ugh, that sounds gross. Gather up the sides of your plastic wrap and squeeze the edges together to encase the ball in dough. Then feel free to remove any excess dough that's on the crease end. Lightly dust it with cornstarch, placing the seam side down, and press with a 100 gram sized mooncake mold. Just be careful to avoid squeezing the filling out. Once that's tamped down, I like to press it an additional seven to 10 times to really get that good print. You know, you want a nice print. Then just pop out that little man and look how beautiful it is. Place it on a baking sheet lined with parchment paper and repeat with the rest of your mooncakes. By the way, you can definitely freeze any extra paste you have left over. Now, once you have your mooncakes, give them a light misting with water and place them in an oven set to 375 Fahrenheit or 190 Celsius for five minutes. Then remove and brush with an egg wash consisting of one egg yolk and one teaspoon of water. Be sure to brush them very, very lightly, like a microscopic layer of wash. Reduce the oven temp to 325 Fahrenheit or 160 Celsius, then back into the oven for five more minutes. Pull them out and give them an ultra light brushing one more time. If if you overbrush, you're gonna lose the pattern, all right? Now back into the oven for 10 to 13 more minutes or until beautifully golden brown like this. I mean, come on, 
Look at that, absolutely stunning broth. Now let that cool completely on a wire rack, and they're good to eat now, but I'd recommend covering them in plastic wrap and letting them rest overnight in up to three days. They get that classic mooncake softness that everybody loves, so just a little tip of the day. Now with that said, I think we need to taste this. Okay, so normally you would let these rest overnight, wrapped in plastic wrap, because that's how you get that classic soft melt in your mouth crust that makes you want to cry, but for the sake of time, we're going to go ahead and eat it now. This is the red bean paste. Now, obviously, uh, you could add a salted egg yolk to either of these, whether it's the lotus or the bean. You can add a salted egg yolk to either. I know people are going to be mad at me and be like, Josh, you didn't add an egg yolk. Oh my god. Papa doesn't like the egg yolk. Okay, that's my own personal preference, and that's allowed. Oh well. I'm, a, I'm like at a loss. This is the kind of cake that makes you go... Can't believe I did that in front of my mom. Yay, it's my helper of the day. Everybody get a round of applause, so exciting. She doesn't like red bean paste, but I made it though. Oh, okay. I like it, Josh, it's good. It's good, mm -hmm. right? I like this a lot. That's a winner, she likes it. As for the lotus paste, it's like luxurious. This is the Mercedes Benz, the, the Rolls Royce of mooncakes. Lotus seed, uh. Most people don't even make their own lotus seed paste anymore, and we're Mm. That's really tasty. We got a low seed. We got a. Mm. So, whether you celebrate the mid autumn festival or not, it doesn't matter. You should make yourself some mooncakes. Do it for the moon. Do it for you. But for the most part, do it so you could eat yummy, yummy. You want to know what else is a beautifully ornate little pastry? My yeah. <laughs> B roll. <laughs> Guys, so we made mooncakes. I think they came out beautiful. So we had two traditional fillings. We have the lotus seed paste and we have the red bean paste. Now, obviously, you can use many, many other things. The world is your oyster. If you wanna do chocolate, do chocolate. If you wanna do matcha, do matcha. It's up to you. But these are great baselines to start at. If you've never done it before, I'd really recommend following along here and then freestyling as you go. The one thing that I learned from making these was it's not really that hard, but you really have to follow the directions that I've given you. There were a couple tricks that I tried to make happen to make this a little bit faster and just, Long story short, it didn't end that well. As long as you follow along, you're gonna have a great time. So with all that said, if you enjoyed this video or you learned something, leave a like, subscribe, and I will see you.